Hello and welcome to the shop. In my last video, you may have seen me make this sled. It's for building custom segmented pin blanks. Now, while I was experimenting with the sled, it became apparent to me that I was going to need some way to cut different thicknesses of veneers from contrasting woods to keep those pin blanks looking interesting. And that's what this sled is for. I went rummaging through the shop looking for things I could use to make this sled and I found a really nice piece of quarter inch maple veneered plywood as well as a couple of really nice blocks of three quarter inch red oak. I made a couple of sleds for my old bandsaw and I made a runner for the T-Track and it just so happens that this runner fits perfectly in the T-Track of my new bandsaw so we're going to be able to use this. It's just a piece of red oak that is cut to fit the width of the T-Track and it's a little shallower than the depth of the track. I dug through the drawers of nuts and bolts and I found some really nice quarter 20 carriage bolts. Now we may end up cutting these down to size. They are a little long, but uh, I'd rather the bolt be too long and cut it to size than be too short and have it not work. I also found some quarter 20 nuts and some washers and then a couple of little wood screws that we can use to attach the runner to the bottom of the sled. I glued my T-Track runner to the bottom of my sled and now what I want to do is go ahead and run it through the blade and zero out one side of the sled. I took the larger piece of oak and I split it into three one inch sections which will be hold downs for my sled. I want to drill a 3 8 inch hole dead center of each of my hold downs. I cut the smaller block of red oak into three inch and a half squares that we'll use for knobs to tighten our hold downs. I've chucked up a half inch Forstner bit and the reason I chose half inch is because it's just slightly smaller than the diameter of the nut that fits our quarter inch 20 carriage bolts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drill into our oak block to the depth of the lip of the Forstner bit. I've replaced the Forstner bit with a standard quarter inch wood bit. That's the same diameter as the carriage bolt we'll be using. We want to go ahead and find the dimple in the center of our hole that the Forstner bit left and drill the rest of the way through our blank. I'm going to take the nut and I'm going to place it into the hole we made with the Forstner bit and using a hammer, I'm going to drive it into the block of wood. And these should give us some really nice knobs to be able to tighten our hold downs. This is the side of the sled that's been zeroed out with the bandsaw's blade. I brought my hold downs up right to the edge of the sled and what I'm going to do now is measure and get equal distances between the three of them and then we'll drill a hole right down through the sled at this point for each of the hold downs. I've got the holes for the hold downs drilled on the board it's now time to go ahead and drill a hole the diameter of our carriage bolt through the board. Using a Forstner bit just a little larger than the diameter of the cap of our carriage bolt, we're going to go ahead and countersink each of these three holes deep enough to allow clearance for that cap. Here's why I like to use carriage bolts for these sleds. I drilled a hole the exact diameter of the carriage bolt. Using a Forstner bit, I made a countersink around that hole deep enough to accept the, the bolt's cap. You'll notice this nice little square section right below the cap. It's kind of like a built-in nut. What we're going to do is take a hammer and we're going to drive these bolts down into these countersunk holes, which will lock the bolts into our plywood sled and they won't spin when we're tightening our hold downs. As we prepare to finish putting the sled together, I want to make a quick note. The hole that I drilled in my hold downs is slightly larger than the diameter of the bolt. And we do this because it needs to freely move back and forth so that we can get some good leverage and a nice tight fit on whatever we're trying to hold on the edge of the, of the uh, sled. 
we'll go ahead and drop a washer and then we'll put our nut on. Using the last of the red oak scrap from the knobs, I went ahead and cut a couple of half inch sections and we'll use those on the back of the hold downs for wedges. The last thing to do is chuck up a piece of wood and test our sled. To use the sled, we'll start by loosening up the nuts for the hold downs. Place your stock beneath the hold downs. Snug it up. And then you want to adjust your stock so that it protrudes. This is the zero clearance. This is going to run right next to the blade. So allowing for the kerf, any distance past the kerf of your blade is going to be the thickness of the veneer that you're making. Once you've got the block where you want it, simply tighten these down, make them nice and snug, and you're ready to take this to the saw and run it through the blade. And just like that, you've got a piece of veneer cut to the perfect thickness for that segmented pin. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had a great time making this sled. I know it's going to come in useful in my shop. I hope you consider making one for your shop. I'd like to thank you for joining me for this video. And I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Have a great evening, everybody.